we're back with another World Cup of Design playthrough. This is uh, Dark Horse South by Honey Badger Hacker. We're going to play pin two, and according to the sheet, um, he suggests uh, medium winds from the north or south, so we'll go medium winds from the south. And yeah, that's it. Let's Let's get to it. So as with all these playthrough rounds, I'm doing um, using the 281 driver with pro difficulty, and I play with the scout cam off and the follow cam off. So we are <coughs> on the coast. You can't Ukraine tribute flag there. Um, okay. So we've kind of got a just kind of an island sandscape, as it were. Um, so let's see what how we how we do. So we got the fairway pinched in at about like 280 and then it widens out a little bit. Par 5. The green is kind of angled left to right. I'm guessing maybe if you're if you're really downwind you might be able to make that fairway but not really. Hi Jay. I think the chat is you right now. Figured I'd do a it's nice to do a stream for a uh, for folks over in Europe once in a while. Okay, so we missed the fairway, so now we got to think about where to go. Um, I'm... I seems like the play is to go over into this left fairway. So that's downhill. It's hard to tell exactly where I should be aiming this. I can't tell if that if this landing area is part of the same hole or if it's one coming in the other direction I think it belongs to this hole but it is pretty far down so it's hard to see where it is without the scout cam so I don't know I'm just gonna kinda take a swing here I guess Yeah, we ended up in the bunker. So I guess we we're kind of in the neighborhood of where we were trying to go. But at least we got an angle. Okay, I guess that worked out. We're somehow going to make a birdie out of this. Uh, let's see. So there's the direction we're coming. I feel like your steps there kind of look like they could come into play. Like I could imagine a shot just caroming, like taking a wild carom off those steps because the steps are basically 
like front right <laughs> almost otherwise the green is pretty big um, there's some little ridges in it I can't tell what's on the left side of the green it looks like it's a, f a runoff area so just kind of a series of of kind of humps and hollows but yeah that lower I feel like maybe that lower landing area is perhaps a little disconnected from the from the upper one like cuz I was think I wanted to lay up down there but I couldn't see it at all it was just totally blind But we managed to get the angle on the second shot. Hey, John. Yeah, I'm doing good. Okay, so now we, we're like playing out to sort of an island or a peninsula, I guess. Long par for short par four. This is downhill as well. Oh, so it's like very much a three par three and a half. So I think we'll probably just try and play a three wood short right and see what happens. You know, there's a reasonably generous layup area, although if you're it cuts off yeah at two sixteen. And you got you got room to kind of maneuver around. If you want to go right it really it really narrows a lot though. Yeah, pump your fist as it goes in the bunker. Okay, green's really narrow. Slopes hard right to left. We got a fence kind of behind the green there. I've said this before. Um, I'm generally very, at least you gave it, there's a little bit of daylight between the green and the fence, so that's good, but putting fences along playable areas is something I'm not a fan of. Um, like around tee boxes, of course, that's totally, you see it all the time. But um, but putting it around a green, you really introduce, you can introduce playability headaches. Because um, what if somebody hits a drive that goes over the green and they just end up totally stymied by the fence? You know, that's not very, that's, you know, completely man-made. It's not Obviously, in real life, you, you'd probably get to take relief, but you don't get relief in this game. So I don't know if the fence really adds anything. Well, that didn't come up. That didn't didn't have enough on it. But yeah, clearly there's a, a penalty for missing right, so um, it probably was, doesn't really make anyone think twice about going for it. But but that's you know that's okay. It's basically playing like a really hard. You got to work to make your birdie. I might smooth out your uh, kind of your run up area there just a little bit though. It looks like you've got there's like a really severe hump in it kind of or a severe side slope. Um, it kind of makes running a ball like running it up here with a th onto the green with a three wood doesn't really I don't think it's viable. You basically have to carry it onto the green. Otherwise, you're going to get a really, you could get a really violent kick to the left.
Okay, so we've got the really, really long bridge back. But yeah, I think I, I agree with Jay. I think the I think the bunkering looks pretty good. So we've got long par. No, it's just kind of a medium length par three to a very generous green. Okay, there's a steep fall off to the right. Again, I've kind of said my piece, my piece about the fences. So the green's kind of divided into a few little compartments here. Not sure if the back right pin is super accessible, but I mean, I, I managed to get to 13 feet, which is reasonably close. Okay, so now we're playing uphill. Or are we kind of heading back towards the middle of our island? So we've got this kind of central... There's that center line guy that I can't see. Um, so there's a little bit of guesswork as to, you know, am I going to be able to get left of it? I think my drive will, will make the carry. Yeah, I think you could have done without this thing, um, right? Obviously, you know, to get the angle into the green, you got to take on the hazard on the left. I don't think this really adds much. Right, instead, I'm. it's basically forcing me to, to play over here instead of going over there. But I think the fact that I can't see it from the T really, it's really kind of the clincher for why I would probably eliminate that. I mean, I think the sight lines on this, on that hole are pretty good. Um, I like the idea of hitting over that ridge there with the bunker cutting into it. Um, obviously we didn't make it. But it kind of turned a strategic hole into sort of an all or nothing hole. All right, well, we managed to give ourselves a pretty good chip at it. But yeah, otherwise, like, I think, you know, if you go right of the, of that thing, then um, you've got a, a r rough angle with the slopes of the green. Maybe you've got a, the backstop here, the yellow slope kind of maybe bails you out a little bit. Um, I think the other thing is like I my my shot was probably coming in here way too hot, and it just got stopped by the heavy rough. But you've got that slope down there. Why not? 
why not just wrap this fairway around the back as well because then my ball would run a lot further off and I'd have a really tricky chip up the hill and then going back down again. I feel like you kind of bailed me out here. Okay, so now we got a split fairway, ultra wide fairway down the left, really narrow one down the right. I don't think I really stand that much to gain given how narrow that is. Maybe I'll have a really, maybe I'll end up with a really long second. I mean, you'll probably, I guess you run out of fairway if you're a big hitter, but we're into the wind, so we should be fine. Oh, and it gave us a three wood. Damn it! I mean, I needed to club up. So if I did club up, it seems like I would have had a pretty simple wedge in there, maybe a nine iron. Um, but the the green site looks good though. It's kind of benched into the little hillside there with some bunkers on the left. take that. Okay, so you do have to deal with that little bulge in the green um, if you go left. Um, I think the green slopes here are a little... maybe a little all over the place. Um, I don't know if it feels like, it doesn't necessarily feel like this green kind of fits in with the overall landform. Like it feels like it should, because you've got like the, the dunes up here on the, on, the, well, on the golfer's right, and then you've got the water down there, and like there's a lot, a lot of places where the green's sloping away from the water. But yeah, and I'm not sure there's enough punishment for just bailing, bailing left there. I guess if I'm a plat player and I've got like awesome tempo, then yeah, just go for that little shoot up the right. But I don't know if there's that much of a reward for doing that. Okay, so we got another uphill tee shot. Kind of diagonal. Um I think this looks good. It's maybe a maybe a tad similar looking to number 4. I mean, it's not not as sandy, but All right, so there's a long par 4. Looks like it's uphill and then downhill. And we hit a fairway. How about that? All right. So let's see what the deal is with the green. So it looks like it's a narrow green, kind of falls off on every side, bunkering, 
short left and very short right. All right, we played it kind of safe there because you got to be pretty precise if you're going to hit that back pin. Although I'm not sure how much it would run off, certainly on the right. Um, but again, that's just that's just how the game is. So it's kind of like the front of the green is sort of like in a a slight depression and then the back is like up is like kind of raised and falls off on every side but so far you know I've, I've really dug the uh, kind of the vistas and panoramas I think they look pretty good there aren't I haven't noticed any like you know, barren areas that everything seems tied together pretty well. Okay, now we're kind of going through a little shoot of trees here. Green looks very skinny. I think it's kind of a hit the fairway or else proposition here, but I could be wrong. Okay, so we hit into a pretty massive upslope there, which killed the drive. So I think that means we're going to have to hit a a driver. I don't think it's going to get there, but we could might be able to get in. We could probably clear the bunker, maybe get it to the front edge of the green. I'm curious what kind of shot we'll have if we miss right, because I'm guessing this is below the level of the green. Yeah, it seems like you kind of have to get to the top of the hill there with a slightly longer driver to really be able to appreciate the sight line for the second shot. Okay. Oh, so we did hit the green. We got ourselves a decent eagle putt here. It seems like if you miss right, you do have a pretty... It probably depends on where the pin is. If the pin's to this pin, it seems like you got a reasonably simple splash shot. And probably also to the back right pin. But if the pin is kind of protected by some of those slopes it's less it's not as good had that we've had that island house as a backdrop for a couple a couple shots here 
So we've got kind of a slight down, slightly downhill par three. Uh, water and fence left, dune right. Oh. <laughs> All right, I'm curious to see how this plays to some of those back pins. Um, but yeah, like I'm imagining the back pin with the fence like just a few feet away. Again, could be a bit of a playability headache. The, the swale feels a tad severe and maybe a little too straight and symmetric because I feel like that doesn't necessarily fit in with the vibe you've been going with so far. Yeah, I've just kind of, uh, I'm trying to moderate it, it a little bit, <laughs> but I've, I have, I have mentioned the fences. All right, well, we managed to get it up and down. But yeah, that dunescape to the right of the green is so it looked like it looks very pretty, very natural looking, and then you have a like a, a completely horizontal swale and fencing. Right, so just something be very natural looking, and then two things that are you know very obviously artificial. Okay, so we got a a split fairway here. I can't make that carry. I mean, it is downhill and downwind a little bit, but I can't do it, or I'm not going to try. So we'll just play one down the right fairway here. But yeah, I'm just looking at your fairway here, and I don't know, personally, I'm just not a big fan of the make the little tail of fairway for a big hitter to try and hit to. Well, that turned out pretty good. Um, you know, I just try, I try and make things look a little, maybe a little more, a little more subtle. Okay, so we got a long green. It seems like you, the going the shortcut basically just gives you a, a shorter second in. You do have a better angle, I think, because of that that bunker there and the slopes coming off of it. Let's check out a replay, shall we? Since we didn't get to see the ball finish. I always like to see how the ball behaves when it's on the ground. Yeah, we just cut that slope just right.
Okay, so we got a dog leg right. <clears throat> Another, oh, this is a short par five. Um, water on the outside of the dog leg. <clears throat> Generally, I find that some, that can be really hard to pull off and use it in an interesting way. But let's see. It does seem like you want to kind of stay towards the outside of the dog leg somewhat based on the way the green is bunkered. Okay. Probably got to hit a five iron here and see if we can just land it on the front. Oh, it kicked right. Yeah, you kind of have to be pretty much perfect. And I don't even know if you can get a straight bounce there. Okay, if you get overly aggressive, you end up in the hollow over there, and then you've got to chip back up the hill, and it's running away from you so I think that that works yeah the green's kind of on a crown and it's a short par 5 so almost like a kind of a slight spin on a road template It seems like you've kind of made a conscious decision to not have the water in play on any holes, um, or at least, you know, like on the green, by the greens, um, which, you know, I have no problem with that. It's a conscious decision. Alright, so this is a pretty flat looking hole. So it's just kind of a random, seems like a random bunker strewn fairway. I, I'm supposing that going right is not necessarily the best option because that's probably going to give you a, a lousy angle. but we aren't going to be getting there in two. So yeah, I think we'll just plunk a hybrid out to the corner here and go from there. And we ran out of room. But yeah, this is kind of like the second, this is the second straight hole where you've had like a dog leg and you put water on the outside of it. I don't know. I There just aren't that many, if you think of like,
great holes in real life. It's hard to think of many where there's, where there's, you know, the main hazard is on the outside of a dog leg. I'm not, you know, I mean, I'm not saying completely contort your routing so that you avoid it, but it's just really hard to make a good hole that way, I think. Oh no. How'd that happen? I guess we just caught the slope and just kicked into the water. And yeah, I, I guess I don't really see how this hole is... I guess you have a few slopes that could conceivably stop your ball, but this part, this doesn't look very drivable. Just looking at the way the green is angled and the way the contours sit. And yeah, you can't really see much of the trouble on your... I couldn't really see much of the trouble on my second shot. I mean, I had a lousy angle, I guess. Um, well, I guess I was kind of playing for the good angle, but... I don't know. I couldn't really see much. This hole just feels... It feels a little awkward. I mean, it has, it has like... You can see the strategic value in it and everything. Um, like, it ticks, as, ticks lots of boxes technically, but it just feels awkward. Which sometimes can be good, but sometimes it's not. Hey, Cav, thanks for stopping by. And I'm not saying that just because I made a double, I promise. Okay. Long par four. Fairway narrows as we get further down and then just kind of just kind of shuts off um, the green looks like it's kind of up in the dunes a little bit hey honey badger yeah we're just on the back nine of the course here I'll let you um, catch up on the VOD um, for the front nine. Okay, so we found the fairway. Again, kind of seems like the green, uh, the green really opens up from the left, and it's a long par four um, with all kinds of junk to carry over here. Um, so I feel like I'd, I'd like a little, maybe a little more width here. Um, you know, maybe shrink down this bunker complex a little bit. Um, you know, give me an excuse to play out to the right to give myself a bad angle. I feel like that's happened a number of times where it's it's like you have to play to a certain side of a central hazard um, to get the angle or shorten the hole, but then you make it you make going the other going to the other side of it so unattractive that I'm kind of like forced into deciding to be aggressive.
Okay, so we got a bit of a punch bowl here. Green's in a bit of a hollow. Again, angled, so if you play it closer to the water, you've got a better approach. All right, I think we're a little bit in between clubs here. That could be trouble. Now oh, it just carried. And it's down into the hollow. Okay, so you got some feeder slopes and stuff to access the back right pins. All right, let's let's play a proper golf shot here. I know we could splash it, but that's that's dumb to do it from just off the fringe. Let's see if we can play a chip shot. Not enough. Okay, medium, sort of short, shortish par four. Looks like we can kind of try and fit a driver in there in between these bunkers. bit of an awkward yardage here. I think if we loft this, we should be okay. Then you got that big false front to deal with. Right, you can you might spin it off the front. I think that works well for the with a wedge um, approach. I guess that's not necessarily the front. That's kind of the f maybe the front left. And then you kind of got fall offs all around. Uh, nice read. Okay, so we got a uh, we're hopping out to the little island again, I think.
short par three. It's downwind, so we gotta gotta be very careful. sail on us a little bit. Oh, we held the green. Oh, oh, got inside got inside six feet. Okay, so the green's kind of just long and skinny in this little pocket. Oh, nice replay angles. <laughs> so much for that. Yeah, we got hot on the front, but we've we've cooled off considerably on the back. Okay, back out. We're kind of just navigating this island here is this like a split fairway or maybe that's coming the other direction to this green that island green there either way this is really narrow I'm not going that way yeah I think the play is just I mean I'm not sure what it's just like think twice about hitting a driver because you might go in the bunker. I think you're gonna I guess you're gonna run out of room if you go left. But like that doesn't feel inherently less risky, um because you get the water there, so I think I might just play I'll probably just play up the right here. I assume that what I'm aiming at there is the, that's the center line bunker. Feels like those trees are blocking out some nice views too. I'm not sure why why those got put there. I don't know if it's just to discourage taking an alternate route. Okay, we managed to hit our to place our drive so we got a wedge up the hill um, that area out to the right there on the other side of the bridge does look a little bit it looks a little empty I'm not sure if there's another like tee shot playing back over it or what I think maybe that I guess that's the is that the next T box over that's the next T box over here or something. Oh, we didn't make the carry. Yep, that is the next T. All right, elevated green just slopes pretty sharply back right to front left. And that's a question: Can you find the right, the right part of the green with your wedge shot? Hmm.
Okay, so we got slightly uphill part three on the shorter side. I don't know, it feels like the, the green's a bit removed from the from the cliff. I think the just looking off to the left there, it looks like the the face there looks a little sheer. Um I think if you compare that sculpting to what we saw on Sleepy Panda's course, I think you kind of see a bit of a difference. Sleepy Panda's kind of his coastline looked a, had a lot more like kind of little natural randomness to it. Um, that looks just a little bit too vertical for my liking. And yeah, I've said it before, but that fen the fencing, I don't think it really adds a lot. It's just a lot of work for you. But I've said it before, and I'll, I'll reiterate it. I think the generally the dune, the bunkering in the dunes looks pretty good. And maybe it could have raised this tee box a few feet. I'm not saying, like, the visibility is not, like, a real issue or anything, but um, it just feels like that the bridge there is just kind of staring us in the face a little bit. So we got a dog leg around this giant sand dune here. And we can't really cut the corner at all. into the wind, so I think, hmm. yeah, we got a, I think we got to pull driver here. I think that turned out pretty good. Okay, so the second shot was kind of this, to this island. Yeah, see, I think this looks without... This is better because you don't have the fencing around it. Um, but still, if you... Like, if you... It is kind of a... It feels like a par 5 that you're just designed like a long par 4, though. Um... I guess with the layup, you can, because, like, you know, I don't, there's no real reason to try and force your layup into that little neck there. If you, say, you, suppose you miss the fairway or it's really into the wind and you don't use a long driver. Oh, and that was 18, okay. Alright, so... Uh, I don't have a whole lot of concluding thoughts here. I think I pointed out most things. Um, but I guess one thing I, I will say is that... Um, I thought, you know, the... The environment 
and ambiance was really good. It's just that this kind of, you know, this sandy delta island with bridges, you know, hopping you across a bunch of islands and stuff. It feels like it's kind of overplayed, you know? Um, I feel like every contest we get like six of these courses. Um, and so it's it does make it hard to, to stand out among that bunch. Um, I mean, to be fair, this, this game's been out for a while, you know... It feels like almost every everyone that like a, a very good version of each type of course has been done. Um, but yeah, I would just say cut back. The, the natural parts looked good. I think just cut back on the woodwork. You don't have to place so many bridges and fences. Um, I thought the whole designs were generally pretty good. Um, you know, there are that I'll just kind of let my comments from some of the individual holes uh, stand for themselves but um, but yeah I thought it was um, pretty well done um, planting was good so yeah um, thanks for thanks for watching thanks for thanks for the course Eric um, and uh, we're gonna come back after this short break with a second playthrough so stick around